this podcast discusses true crime, which may entail violence and other material intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. And it's Lexi. And it's Lexi Day. So what you got? It is. So today, um, if any of our listeners are from the northern region of Virginia in the United States, you're probably going to recognize this one instantly. This is, uh, for all intents and purposes, Virginia's Mothman. I'm going to be talking about the Bunny Man of Fairfax County, Virginia. You're close enough to Virginia. You're in West Virginia. So have you heard of this yeah. one? I think so. <laughs> This one is actually it's, it's been one of it's one of my favorites. I've been thinking about covering it for the longest time because it was in like an audiobook or a podcast or something that I was listening to the last time I was like taking a long solo road trip. I could not tell you when that was. Probably actually, you know what it was? It was probably when I was on the, my way home from the Scene Queen concert last year. <laughs> That's probably when it was. Oh gosh, it's been almost the whole year since that. I know. I was supposed to see Time her flies. again. I was supposed to see her again in November and I got COVID. <laughs> uh, I was rocking out from my couch. <laughs> <laughs> she tours all the time. I'm just like fingers crossed that she's going to tour again soon and I'll get to see her like maybe not during peak six season because I also missed an, missed an Ash Nico concert for another illness. <laughs> yeah, I missed the Ash Nico concert because I worked. She had in Pittsburgh on a Tuesday yeah like, yeah i'm what, i'm seeing of all days i know like i'm seeing fallout boy and jimmy Eat world on a wednesday which actually works out for me because i have a weird work schedule so like i don't work wednesday but for anyone else it's like who what you know what person our age is going to a concert on a wednesday <laughs> like that's his that's his school night <laughs> how did we get here Back to the I bunny don't man. I don't Back know how I managed man. to bring Fallout Boy into this. Anyway, so the legend of the bunny man and the bunny man bridge seems to be part myth, part truth. So I'm going to break those both down for you. I'm going to start with the fun part today. I'm going to start with the legend. So on an internet forum in 1999, a man named Timothy Forbes chronicled an extensive legend that outlined the bunny man and his infamous bridge, which is a bridge supporting the Colchester overpass in Fairfax, Virginia, uh, in Fairfax County, Virginia. So this is a brief synopsis of the legend. I'm not going to go into the whole thing um, that Forbes does. It's much more thorough. I'm pretty sure that you can find the original post out there. It should not be difficult. Um, it's a very infamous legend at this point. So the legend goes on to say that there was a vehicle transporting criminals to an insane asylum that crashed on its way to the state hospital in 1904. This caused the convicts to escape and all were recovered except for two, Marcus Walster and Douglas Griffin. The hunt continued by police for Walster and Griffin, where a trail of dismembered and or half-eaten rabbits were found strewn about near the bridge and in the surrounding woods. Some versions of the legend state that the bodies of the rabbits were even hung under the overpass itself. Ew. How do you catch that many rabbits, like, without traps? That's... I don't Can want to say you, that's impressive, but that's impressive. <laughs> I mean, it is. My only thing is, that's why I thought I was like, oh, they're just trapping them. Like, I don't know. Maybe he just like MacGyvered a trap out of something he found in the woods. It's my Must guess. Because otherwise, it's not like he's just chasing them down on foot. <laughs> like, it's a rat. like, obviously, once you have them, they're not very tough, but like, they're hard yeah. to catch. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, we've both worked with rabbits. Like, they're zippy little guys. Yeah, they are. So I learned recently, speaking of zippy little animals, that our hospital has two separate codes for a loose cat and a loose dog. And I was like, what if we work with non-traditional species? Like not long ago, we had someone bring in a pigeon. Like what if a pigeon gets out? Do we have like, do we have like a bird loose in building code? Do we have like ferret or rat loose in building code? Hmm. We don't have codes for stuff is loose in the building. We probably should. Because highly recommend have... it because then you can just shout yeah. it over the walkie and like then you know it doesn't freak out everyone else yeah because we have like a couple dogs that have broken out of our runs like they just figured out how to unclip it from the inside had a bust open we had like the slowest most elderly dachshund just sort of slowly wander out of its bottom cage once like it just it, it didn't latch properly or the dog like pushed it open somehow and then it was like the slowest most geriatric escapee you can possibly picture 
He's <laughs> like, should I be out here? No. Right, we were I? like, how did you Maybe. get in the treatment area? <laughs> Put you back. <laughs> so yeah, how this guy got all these rabbits is beyond me. So Walster's body was eventually found under the overpass, clutching a handmade hatchet with no clear cause of death. So was he like axe throwing? Like was he was he not trapping the rabbits? Was he just like Phew. That's also impressive because they right. are fast. I've done axe throwing. I don't think my aim is good enough to hit like a rabbit from twenty feet mm-hmm. away or something. No. So a year later, after the discovery of Walster's body, who in this version of the legend, Griffin's body was never found. A year later, a group of teens were out late one night drinking under the Colchester overpass when a bright flash was reported to have appeared. And the teens were all found hanging under the bridge, having been disemboweled the next day. Oh. Right? With no leads on the killer. So then the next year, the same thing was said to happen to another six teenagers at midnight on Halloween who were drinking under the bridge. And hence the legend was born. People started to steer clear of that overpass. But it is said that every few decades, a new group of people tries out the legend only to find themselves experiencing the same fate. So a couple things. One, the first part of this in 1904, I don't know if you've ever seen a movie based on a comic series called Trick or Treat. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorites. I've seen it like five times. But there's a there's a scene that's very similar to like bus crashes, crazy, dangerous people escape. And that's immediately what I thought of. I was like, oh, this is like that that one subplot in Trick or Treat. Um and I think the comic would have been around in 1999. So I have to wonder if it was partially, and if that partially inspired the Bunny Man legend. I know the movie came out like 2007 or something like that, but I think the comic is older. I have to look it up. Mm. And how do they know that the teens saw a flash of bright light if all of them were later found disemboweled? Like, that's my first thing. It's like, how do you know there was a bright light and then suddenly poof, all the teenagers were hanging? Like, was there just a bystander just watching this take place? You know? Maybe. Like someone who's just staring at a group of teenagers drinking under a bridge. Like, that's not weird. (laughs) I think we need to ask them more, like, less questions about the teenagers, more questions like, what were you doing at a bridge at midnight in Halloween staring at a group of adolescents? Like, you'd be suspect number one. And, like, the version of the story, it's like, oh, one of the teenagers reported a flash of light, right? Like, how did they report the flash of bright light? If they were dead. Right? Like, did the psychic, is it like an eye zombie situation? Like, what's going on here? So those are my immediate suspicions that kind of killed the legend for me. Uh, it turns out there's zero record of any of these events occurring. No Walster, no Griffin existed, no group of teens found hanging and disemboweled under the bridge, and no trail of rabbits were ever found near the Colchester overpass. This version of the legend seems to be a work of fiction by Forbes based loosely on a few bizarre incidents reported in the 70s. But it got so popular. This legend got so popular that we now have like an official bunny man historian that I'm going to get into later in the episode. Imagine like that's your title. Like you were like bunny the bunny man, man historian. guy. Yeah. I know a guy. The bunny man guy. Right. Right. You guys, you guys, I got a roadkill guy. I got a bunny man guy. I got a not deer guy. <laughs> I said something, I said something today to my fiance and she misheard me where we were closing the, the, we were closing the blinds and the windows and I made a joke about, oh, we don't want the lawn care people to see us because sometimes people will come through like the, the main areas of the development and like service the lawns or whatever. And she thought that I said, and mind you, the house backs up to the woods. And she thought that I said, oh, we don't want the long haired people to see us. And she was like, who the fuck are the long haired people that you've seen in our backyard? She's like, I assumed it was one of your cryptids. She was like, I didn't even stop to think. She's like, I just I just guessed it was, you know, one of your things. (laughs) One of your spooky (laughs) little fellas. It's like, no, sweetie, lawn care. (laughs) And then I was like, long haired people. That's just like regular people like not me there's just hippies know, in your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's just hippies in the backyard we should go take care of that oh <sighs> oh no my milkshakes <laughs> they brought the boys okay um <laughs> so the less exciting 
although honestly still pretty creepy, bunny man sightings seem to originate in the 70s when on October 19th, an Air Force cadet named Robert Bennett was out with his fiance late one night around midnight driving around Burke, Virginia when coming home from a football game and then driving around to visit, uh, I believe, one of their family members. I did not write down whose uncle it was. It was either Bennett's uncle or his fiance's uncle. The pair was parked on Guinea Road uh, near a up-and-coming development when they saw something in the rearview mirror in the field behind them. The two heard a crash as a hatchet flew through one of the car windows. Allegedly, the man shouted the two were on private property and the two sped away. Bennett reported to police later that night that the man they saw seemed to be wearing a white bunny suit with long ears, but Bennett's fiance thought the man was wearing a white pointed hook white pointed hood like that of KKK robes. So a few days later on October 29th, a security guard named Paul Phillips stumbled upon a man wearing a white rabbit costume on the porch of a home that was under construction. The man threatened Phillips by saying if he came any closer, he would chop off his head and began hacking at one of the porch posts with a hatchet. Phillips went to retrieve his gun from his post, but when he returned to the area, the man was nowhere to be seen. News of these incidents spread rapidly throughout Fairfax, Virginia, leading to over 50 reports of the Bunny Man sightings to police in the following weeks. Reminiscent of Mothman, honestly. And the best description we have is from Paul Phillips, who describes a white man in his late teens, early 20s, roughly 200 pounds and under six foot. This man was never caught or reprehended. Reprimanded. Reprehended? I don't think that's a word. I think I made that up. I don't think it is either. <laughs> I apprehended, think I say, you mean? App- I think I tried to say apprehended and reprimanded. <laughs> it sounded like really convincing when it came out. So I was like, that's a word. And then I had to think about just it. Just say like, it like confidently and it's fine. Exactly. Exactly. What did someone say to me the other day? Where they, where it was just completely wrong. And I was like, do you mean this? It's reminding me of that scene in Drag Race where she said something about, I just, you know, just want to conversate. And the, per- and the, the other queen was like, it's converse. <laughs> She's like, what? Just say talk. So, a historian that specialized in uncovering the truth of the Bunny Man Bridge, named Ryan Conley, he's our hero of the story, also found a gruesome case of a man who was found guilty of murdering his wife and eight-month-old daughter and burying them in a shallow grave in Fairfax, Virginia in 1949. This man was arrested shortly after the discovery of the bodies, sent to a mental institution after being arrested and convicted. This is believed to be the origin story of Griffin, the asylum escapee aspect of the legend. So who was the bunny man? We don't know. Like at the end of the day, we don't know who this guy was that we saw just in a rabbit costume and an ax terrorizing people. That's so scary. I hate the combination of bunny costume acts like like, you know how being naked with shoes on is somehow like way worse and way more vulnerable and way more naked than just regular naked like rabbit costume with an axe. I'm right, though. Like you like you're thinking about it. and You're like, yeah, naked with shoes on is horrible. <laughs> like, like rabbit costume <laughs> with an axe is so much worse than just regular axe. Rabbit so, costume uh- with axe is the naked with shoes on. <laughs> So that's, there's actually a Dead by Daylight character. It's a woman. She wears like a bunny hat and she throws an axe. Now that I think about it. No way. It's got to be based on this. It's got to be based on this. It probably is. <laughs> Inspired Louise Belcher as the character. <laughs> it, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, to this day, the identity of the bunny man is officially unsolved. Apparently, the housing community being built near the woods in Kings Park, which is where both of these sightings occurred, had a few secluded homesteads in the nearby area where people living there may have been unhappy with the housing development and were attempting to frighten people away from the area or scare people away from living in it. So it's suspected it may have been one of the people living in the homesteads, maybe teenagers messing with them, who knows. But you know how people are. I mean, you like you and me both come from relatively rural areas. We know how it is when housing developments pop up in previously not populated areas. There's always some Jim Bob with like a massive problem with it, you know, because they don't want to be around people. Yeah. That's why they live in, you know, the middle, middle of nowhere, Virginia. <laughs> so this one seems plausible to me. Another theory is that no one in a bunny suit ever existed at all. 
It's that someone was wearing a white hood or hat, was mistakenly thought to be wearing a rabbit costume, or that the story became twisted in some way that the bunny ears or suit evolved. And that stuck simply because it's more baffling than just like man in white hoodie, you know, crazy guy with axe, you know, the second you're like crazy True. guy with axe, but a bunny suit, people are like, there's a bunny suit. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, like crazy guy with axe. That's like a regular Florida headline. But you throw a bunny suit on there. <laughs> right? Now you have an American cryptid. Yeah. So this legend exploded in the 2000s. And apparently in 2011, police had to start doing patrols in the area and ended having to reroute curious onlookers and teens from clogging up traffic on the road of upwards 200 people just that night in Halloween alone because so many people were trying to go to the Bunny Man Bridge. He can't kill all of you. Like it's just It's like it's like storming Area 51. Like that's the vibe I get, you know, like can't get all of them. <laughs> Actually, I'm so I'm being so real. I think storming Area 51 went so perfectly, you know, because no one actually tried anything incredibly stupid and so there was no tragedy that resulted, but they like still had to cover it in the news cuz so many people showed up with stupid signs that just said like <laughs> give me my alien. <laughs> Oh, man. It brought the world together in a way that I hadn't seen since Pokemon Go got dropped. We need another Area forgot. 51 raid. <laughs> I almost forgot Area 51 was raided. I should cover that. I really should cover that. I, I, I still remember watching the news broadcast and it's like the the, the reporter in the front and someone just Naruto, Naruto running past them in the back. <laughs> Ooh, that was so good. Ooh. What a time. So the Colchester Overpass is considered by some to be one of the creepiest places in the U.S. And even though Conley has thoroughly debunked the supernatural and more frightening aspects of the legend, it remains popularly believed that the Bunny Man and his bridge exist as a force of supernatural evil to this day. So that is what I wanted to give you guys on Solved Mystery, Urban Legends, Cryptid. I don't really know what you call it, but I've been dying to cover the Bunny Man Bridge for a really long time. I did think it was going to be more involved because Forbes' original legend is involved, but I didn't want to give you guys a ton of fluff. Um, I, you know, I don't have Forbes' original post in the show notes, but maybe I can track it down. Track it down. Track it down. My goodness. To put it track in there. Track it down. You. Track it down. <laughs> downtown <laughs> go downtown go and track it down to western virginia northern virginia where am i again northern virginia <laughs> even my dog groaned i don't know if anyone <laughs> she, she, that she's like dog. that's enough <laughs> she went uh <laughs> sorry luna just so upset oh and that is what I have for you guys today. So that one was a fun one. It was a short one. I was ex I was hoping this one would be a little bit longer, but you know what? The urban legend ones are usually so short and sweet because in the age of information, the age of the internet, they're really easy to find legends and they're really easy to debunk those legends. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I should maybe I should get back on TikTok and look for like what are the TikTok people getting into? Because I feel like my last super long urban legend was when I covered the not deer, which was like born on TikTok. There's a lot on TikTok. Like I follow a couple pages and I just occasionally say things whenever like I need an encrypted, mm -hmm. whenever it calls for one. Do you follow that morgue page? I think it's uh, her user is like morgues, M-O-R-G-S. Like her name is Morgan. And she just talks about like living on a homestead mm -hmm. in the middle of Appalachia and like the shit that she sees. Mm -mm. If I can find her page, I'll send it to you because there's some really cool stuff that she that she documents and she talks about. And it's not even like an ARG. It's just sort of the equivalent of someone living in like a haunted house that just occasionally talks about like, oh, you know, the ghost did stuff again. Like how like how Mr. Curtis just occasionally messed with you guys. Like that's kind of the equivalent. Oh, OK. Yeah. But that one's great. A lot of people on my on my Twitter feed have been talking about like, oh, are you guys are you guys in like Appalachian encrypted TikTok? And I was like, yay! It's coming down through social media. Woohoo! I get like these like AI created um, like cryptids talking about their own stories and stuff, and they're kind of creepy. So AI like cryptids one. talking about their own stories. Yeah. No, we need to put AI back. We need to put it back. Mm -mm. Nope. 
don't like it. AI is getting out of control these last couple months. I feel like I feel like it's like busting out of the AI woodwork. Art is so bad. It's so like it's so awful in the sense of like for the longest time. Like now, I feel like when I look at cool art, I have to like look at it real hard because there's a part of me that's like, is this AI? Like, is this is this ripping off of another artist? Is this AI? Like, I like first thing I go for the hands. Like, I see art I really like, and I'm like, let me look at the hands. You know, because it's just gotten so out of control. And have you seen those celebrity ads? where it's like Selena Gomez is giving away a free laptop or something like that. And it's, it's a deep fake. Like it is an AI deep fake of celebrities to scam people into thinking that they're going to get a laptop from Selena Gomez or something. No, I haven't seen those. Um, they're unsettling. I've encountered like one or two in the wild and it's, it's unsettling because you're kind of like, why would ex celebrity be doing this? And then you like look at it long and you're like, what's wrong with them? And then then you realize it like doesn't sound right. It's almost like uncanny valley, like the way people describe skinwalkers. Like that's what AI deep fakes are like to me, where I'm like, something's not right here. Yeah, every so often like I'll see a TikTok that says AI generated video. And I'm like, so are there AI oh. like TikTok accounts now? That right? just is that a thing? I and I love and the thing is too is like there's two sides of AI like I see this th these information about AI that's like oh AI recently discovered a way to like catch cancer before it starts and like 14 different types of breast cancers or something you know so preventative measures can be taken I'm like wow that's amazing that's really going to revolutionize like preventative medicine and then I see like celebrity deep fakes or the case of that girl who had that it was like that 14 year old girl who committed suicide because her like a whole bunch of boys were making like ai explicit imagery of her and just like spreading it around the school i didn't know that i heard about the one they did that with taylor swift i did see yeah i did see um what was going on with taylor swift because i know people were talking about how much they hoped that taylor swift's legal team would take action because then it would set such a major precedent for like when it was happening to common people because like mm -hmm. it is so yeah it's one of those things where like when i hear about ai and it's using like technology and medicine i'm like this is so cool and then i see that and i'm like this is terrifying this is dystopian send the meteor <laughs> need another meteor shower <laughs> just, just, just reset <laughs> just specifically take out like ai <laughs> Maybe lower the housing prices when you come down. It would be nice. <laughs> All right. So there's your combination, Bunny Man and the Horrors of AI episode. <laughs> Yay. It's a nice, nice break from whatever hell I unleashed last week and next exactly. week. Exactly. So. Oh, yeah. And next week. So I gave next you guys week. a little break. No one died in mine. At least not for real. Like people fake died in mine. People rumor died in mine. No, actually, I did cover an actual murder. I'm so sorry. I will also give you guys fluff next week. My treat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you guys can find more of us. We are now on YouTube. We have finally got this recording thing to work. Uh, it's exciting. It's awesome. We're on YouTube. We are on Twitter, in theory. Um, we are on TikTok. We are on Instagram. We um, have a Patreon, which is probably the best best way to get access to is ad free content bonus content you guys get to vote on episodes um you guys did not vote last time so you've just given me free range to do whatever i want and boy did i take advantage of that and our patrons are gonna find out and kayla she doesn't know what it is yet yeah no so <laughs> we're about to record it today so if you guys want to know what it is you should like go to patreon and join <laughs> it's just like a half hour of me like breathing into the microphone <laughs> I occasionally like sniffle. <laughs> oh, right. somebody, somebody finally did vote, but it, look, it looks like they voted too late. They chose cult. Um, too late. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Unfortunately, uh, you guys are late. getting, you guys are not getting cult. I was close. It was another C. I guess it the could other be. Another C word. There's cults, cryptids, uh, conspiracies, commurder. Commit murder. <laughs> Crime? <laughs> Crime. Crime. <laughs> C murder. <laughs> they just be letting anybody have a podcast. <laughs> Literally. Anybody can do this. No, really. Like, you guys could just do this if you want. 
It's nothing stopping you. You don't need to be a professional. Oh, man. All right. That was actually wicked. That was happily wicked. Oh, boy. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs>